Hi guys, George Glinski here from Toe the Line, joined today by America's most controversial bare knuckle fighter, Eric Olsen. How are we doing, my man? I'm good. I'm living the life down in Tennessee. Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm in a hammock. Fuck England. <laughs> How come you've moved back to America? Obviously, you in England, I think, for 16 months it was. Oh, yeah, I didn't move back here. I've just been visiting. So um, after six months, U.S. citizens have to leave oh. uh, England for a few months, which is why I didn't get to beat up Anthony Holmes on this lockdown show. We had to... Um, I had to go. I was going to jump over to uh, Germany, um, but I didn't because of the lockdowns. And so uh, Serbia, too, is like the EU pulled out of the, the the UK pulled out of the EU. So I wasn't able to get flights there. And my friend Billy's gym is down here. Billy's a legitimate heavyweight MMA fighter, three and one. Mm -hmm. um, so he invited me to come down here and uh, he was he's training me in all wrestling and, and, and all that. So, uh, yeah, I figured why not? It's been a while since I've terrorized Americans. Might as well. I've just been pushing around the English for so fucking long in England. So I figure I'd come over here and, and see what happens. And we're looking at getting me an MMA fight against somebody from Bare Knuckle Fight Club. Damn. Damn. Talk, talk to me about that. Obviously, you're, you're coming back to mixed martial arts. Is Ty Cummings is the man you're fighting. Exciting Might be. fight. He's 3-0 he's and oh as a pro. He's, he's in, in MMA. He's a BKFC fighter. I'm a BKB trademark fighter, despite what all the little fucking methadone addicts in Castleford want to say. Um, so we can't fight each other in bare knuckle boxing because our companies don't get along, but we can fight each other in MMA. So I think that's a pretty cool cross promotion. Um, yeah, so I'm just waiting on a confirmation from the promoter. And like I said, I'm down here in Saudi Daisy, Dagestan. They wrestle over here like they do over there. You know, so I, it's just all everyone knows I can strike. Look what I've done to the last three people in BKB, which, again, is being ignored in England. You know, anyone from 88 to 93 kilograms, I shut down. Matty Hodgson is actually calling for me to get cut from the promotion because I cut his face into an open vagina on his head, and it scared his children when they looked at him, and he looked like a Halloween mask. So he wants me cut. I bet he does want me cut, don't you, Matty? I cut you, motherfucker. It seems like you've... Uh... You've come for everyone um, up north, actually. The, the southerners are safe, it seems, at the moment. So, so that's good for me and, uh, and likewise. But well, Andrew cool. Ross, oh. Anthony Holmes, Reese oh. Murray, Scott McHugh. I've seen you come after everyone. Who's, who's oh, on the hit yeah. list? Let, let's, all right, so here's the deal. Everybody in England claims they want to have straighteners. Everyone's the gypsy. Oh, mate. Oi, brother. The gypsy king, brother. Straighteners, brother. I come around, nobody wants to have a straightener. Nobody wants to have an all-in. Nobody wants to meet in a field or a gym and throw punches, kicks, knees, elbows, headbutts. Everyone just wants to Twitter talk. All of a sudden, some methadone addict like Reese Murray, the little fucking 69-kilogram kid uh, in Castleford, I only fight in the ring. I, I only, I'm big promotion. Motherfucker, you were just fucking smoking crack with your friends in Wakefield two years ago. Shut up. What was it? So nobody wants to fight. So this is what happened. What happened when I fought Matty Hodgson? Win by cuts. Second what round. happened when I fought Dom Clark? A similar, similar situation. It was third round TKO. What happened when I fought Greg Main? Decision victory. My last three fights in BKB, at my normal weight, between 88 and 93 kilograms, I stopped two people, and I won. Then I decided to become a fat motherfucker, stuff my great big fat chops, and move up to 110 kilograms, and I fought that giant Charlie Milner, and he beat me on a decision. Mm. I don't slave under any illusions. I'm not a natural heavyweight. Yeah, I'll punch you in the face anywhere if I see you at any weight. Doesn't matter to me. You could be fucking dying of it on your deathbed you you annoy me i'm punching you in your shit but as far as a professional fight goes i'm not a real heavyweight so i lost to a real heavyweight cool everyone's overlooking this so this is what happened I'm, I'm set for a title fight i got that on recording with jim freeman dove after i turned maddie hodgson's face into a crater on the moon you remember where he didn't punch me for two rounds he couldn't hit me and his face was literally sliding off like fucking uh brisket on like a like, uh, well, we love food. What's, what's what? Pulled pork sandwich. That's what his face looked like because of me. So um, I got you there that night. They guaranteed me a title shot. Yeah. Me and Holmes set to fight three times. 
you know, Holmes does the typical thing. He gets in my inbox. Respect. The fuck you respect me for? I don't even know you, motherfucker. I don't respect fighters just because they fight. Fuck you, motherfuckers, just because you fight. So me and him talk for a little while. I'm telling him I'm going to beat you up. You seen? It was all good banter, as they as they say. Um, his fans doing the typical insult, threatening to kill me, calling me a nonce. The typical English thing. Nothing ever come of it. So what ended up coming about, because you brought this up, is while my fight for the title has been pushed off because COVID has shut all the shows down, me and Anthony didn't get to fight. Somewhere along the line, Anthony thought he means like, anything that he's super important he's a super important guy with his two judge decisions and he says you know i I can't fight olsen he's not on my level yeah okay anyway i'm digressing all these people just get mad they get mad that andrew ross is one in six in bkb he's he's one in six i can show you a highlight reel of him getting knocked down in hay bales the guy loses in hay bales and I got him into BKB trademark, if anything, actually, if I could find them messages. I was the one who told Jim, yo, put this and put him on. He's a big, fat, stupid northern motherfucker. He's somebody that Podmore could kill. I could kill if I got big and fat. He ain't a real heavyweight. Andrew Ross is talking. The guy's a fucking loser. He does security for what, who's that fucking other loser over there in England that always gets beat up by the Muslim? Huh? Tommy Robinson. He does security for Tommy Robinson. How are you going to do security when you can't fight? One in six. That's why he went to the military. Because he can't fight. He needs a gun. So, Scott McHugh got all mad because I bet against him versus Nathan Leeson. I'm cool with Nathan Leeson. When I'm in England, I represent the Northampton, like the, the Midlands. Mm-hmm. Northampton, I'm in, I stay in Worcester. I terrorize. I own Worcester. I'm like smog in Worcester. I own it. Um, I represent Fitness Factory in Birmingham. You know, Simon Haycock, Michael Canelli's my boxing coach, you know, uh, fucking Connor Tierney. He trains down there. You know, everybody down there. So I'm always there um, training with those guys. So I back Nathan Leeson because I think Nathan's a good fighter. I think Scott's a good fighter. I just think Nathan's a better boxer. Scott McHugh got all mad about that. He sent me a video. Me and Holmes were arguing. Holmes went online on, a, on your interview. He was insulting me, called me a loser and everything. Mm-hmm. So I started insulting Holmes, and I'll get into that in a minute. And Scott felt some type of way about that. So same thing with Reese. Reese Murray, the nicest, quietest person. He's like a librarian in person. Reese, we're going to call Reese the librarian. He fought a 50-year-old Matty Kays, who was set for him to lose. Matty, whatever his name was. Marty, I like Marty. Marty's cool, but let's be real. They put Reese, the 22-year-old librarian, against Marty, you kind of knew how tough Marty is, but you knew Reese was probably going to outbox him. Now Reese has turned his name to Reese Too Sharp. Gee, who are you trying to imitate, motherfucker? Nathan Too Slick? So get the fuck out of my face. So the librarian got all angry that I was arguing with Scott, and then I made some bets. You see, I bet with a bunch of people in England on who would win. My picks lost, and when everybody wanted their money, I told them I'm not paying you because I don't like you, so you ain't getting paid. So everyone got mad. See, I'm doing them a favor. I'm like a drug sponsor. If I gave people up north in Castleford and Leeds 100 pounds, 500 pounds, they go spend it on drugs. So because of me, I've actually stopped them from relapsing on their drug addictions. So they should be thanking me. But instead, they're in my inboxes yelling about me, how I have no honor. No, I don't have no honor. If I don't know you, it's a war. It'd be like Bosnia. I'd be knocking your fucking village down with an AK. And they know it, which is why when I'm in England, nobody does nothing. Anyway. So that's how these arguments all came about and started. It all came about because me and Anthony Holmes started the clash on a fight that was set. It was pushed back because of COVID. Now I've got a 68 kilogram librarian, Reese, who just beat a 50 or 48 year old fighter. No offense, Marty. I like you. Um, talking to me like he's going to do something to me. I'll fuck Reese. Yeah, Billy will fucking eat Reese. Billy will kill Reese over there. What was it? Um, so Reese is just like he's. It's Leeds versus me. The North doesn't like. Remember, what did everyone say about Matty Hodgson versus Eric Olsen? Uh, the North versus the, the South. No, but what did they say about Matty versus me? What was Matty? Matty was going to oh, kill Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you were the underdog, essentially, in the, in the Northern Eyes, for sure, yeah. I was going to be killed. I'm fat. I can't fight. The kid didn't touch me for two rounds. 
His face literally fell off his body, and I picked it up and I said, "Here you go, brother. Take that home down the cobbles, brother." And he left with a loss. And then my training partner Ryan Barrett broke his jaw in thirty seconds, and and Matt sat there like he was in timeout mm. and cried, and that was it. So all these people are mad, honestly, that I beat their home guy. And, and, and they're mad about that. So now they're trying to get me cut from the promotion. It ain't going to happen. It's a fight. We punch people in the face with bare knuckles. Trash talk, no matter how bad it is. You, you see what people say to me. All these people saying I said bad things to Holmes. All right, let's, let's get it out there right now. Anthony Holmes, his father died. When I was cool with Anthony Holmes, that was off limits. Anthony Holmes went on public national TV all over the world and called me a loser. So you opened the door, motherfucker. So I told him, yo, you killed your own father. Your fighting is so boring that your own father literally died watching it. Your father is lucky he died because your fighting would have killed him if he actually saw it. You suck. I don't like you. Fuck you. Fuck the women in your family. You're going to call me a loser on national TV? Well, I'm going to make fun of your dead dad. And if you don't like it, you can see me in the ring or you can see me in the street or you can see me at a gym. But we know nobody wants to do that. Mm. So everybody said, oh, Eric's vile. He's saying mean things. Who cares what I'm saying? Because my goal is to put this fist through your motherfucking face when we fight. You know, so, you know, the typical deal. I said something wrong. Well, you shouldn't have called me a loser then. Yo, his wife left him and took his house during lockdown. Ask him. I still got the screenshots. How am I the fucking loser? Your wife left you. You're fighting bored your dad to death. And I'm the loser. And I won my past three fights at our weight, two by TKO. You just won your second fight on points. How are you a 90-kilogram fighter winning on points? Well, what's wrong? Well, I, I thought you northern lads were, like, tough. Yeah, so I'm currently arguing with everybody. Um, Reese and me was cool, but then he got mad that I didn't pay him his fucking 100 pounds. And now Reese says he's going to beat me up if he sees me. But, of course, I've got to come to Leeds. Yeah. It's not enough that I fly over an ocean. What would you say to people that say that you've gone too far there? Obviously, going there with Anthony Holmes's father is is controversial. Is it's part of your demeanor, it's part of your personality, but it does seem, at least from a lot of people's perspective, to be going a little too far. How would you respond to that? I don't care. Don't do things with me. I won't do them with you. I never got nuts with Holmes before he went on TV and said I was a loser. You're talking shit to a guy who's been in this sport while, while you haven't been. You're talking shit to the only American who travels over there and beats your training partners. I would tell people who found that offensive, good. Because I found it offensive that no, this nobody's insulting me in my motherfucking sport. Mm. If he didn't call me a loser, I wouldn't have ripped into him. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, you've seen all the things. You know, listen, you know how it is in England. If someone does something that someone doesn't like, they get called a nonce. You know, how many times people got to keep calling me that, even though I'm clearly not, and, and, and uh, I'm supposed to take that and just what? Like, be cool with it? You know, I get death threats. You saw the whole thing with Mark Godbeer coming to my fucking girl's house and me having to deal with him. These people say words go too far. Well, you're calling someone a child molester. And I'm not saying Anthony Holmes did that because he didn't. But his friends have. His fans have. And so I really don't care. You know, it's a fight sport. We fight. We punch each other's faces literally off our bodies. And people are crying about that. I said what I said and I stand behind it. If he was in front of me, me and him would be fighting. So I ain't going to sit there and apologize about it. If he don't like it, fight me. If he wants to, he said he was going to retire instead of fight me. Okay, retire. Ben Askren just told Jake Paul that if he saw him in the streets of L.A., he homicide him. That's a threat on someone's life. Mike Tyson was talking about eating people's kids. You know? I said, you're, you're so fucking boring, your dad died because of it. Not my fault your dad fucking died. Hmm. So this is, this is sort of a... A weird topic because it's kind of a freedom of speech you know you can say it people have said things similar in the press that haven't been jumped on 
in the same way that yours has been? Do you feel victimized in that sense that the people are placing the blame on you? Now, listen, I'm an American in England. Anything I do is going to be by the fans, not by the promotion. Promotion's fair with me. Everything I'm going to be do done is going to be looked at is bad. I'm always the underdog because people are going to back up where they're from. The, the bottom line remains. I'm six and five in BKB, and I've been doing this before anybody, and I don't handpick anybody. The librarian, Reese Murray, got in there with a guy that he knew he was going to beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't do that. No, I, I think it's just a matter of people trying to gang up. You know, the same people saying that I'm immoral for this are the same ones telling me that they're going to kill me. My girl's going to get gang raped and fucked. You've seen the screenshots all. Six yeah. months ago, I was being called a child molester. We're going to murder you. Okay, motherfucker, here I is. Come get me. But these are the same people that say I went too far. Yo, I don't care what you say. You can say whatever you want. I don't report people's things. My page is open. I don't block people. I'll block you on Messenger and then talk shit to you and then unblock you. But I don't like block you on Facebook. It's words. I deal in actions. I got knife wounds on my neck. I'm from New York. I deal in actions. If we don't like each other, we go at it with guns, blades, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. These people are going to insult me, insult my people, my girl. I don't care. But when you see me, keep that same energy because I'm not that fighter that went to college that was in fucking an alumni program that he's a professional athlete. I was in prison for a long part of my life as a young kid. You know the story. It is what it is. And if you disrespect me, then, then we're going to go at it when we see each other. And that's just that. And people seem to think there's like a line, like there's no line with me. You're cool to me. I'm cool to you. But if we're going to fight, we're trying to fuck each other up. Anthony Holmes is scared to fight me. And I'm going to tell you why Anthony Holmes is scared to fight me, because I've beaten his training partners. Um, what else? Why would Anthony be home scared to fight me? I mean, look at how I fight. Look at how he fights. He's predictable. He does a lot. He's got a good physique. Who gives a fuck? This is bare knuckle boxing. Matty Hodgson. Look what happened to him. Look what happened to fucking Dom Clark. Dom Clark beat Luke Atkins, who's a legitimate fighter, who's, who's big and fucking a real fighter. Dom Clark shut him down. I fucking TKO Dom Clark. I've been around fighting everywhere, all over the world. And these people want to sit here and moan and cry, trying to get me fired. That's up to the promotion. But this is not by far the worst thing that's happened. You know, this shit happens every few years. Oh, he said this. Yeah, I said it because you ain't in front of me. I have been offering in England everyone under the sun. Come to the gym. Let's have a straightener. Come to this field. Bring your people. Fair play. Everyone wants to pretend to be a gypsy. My girl's an Irish traveler, right? Her other side's Romany. So she's a gypsy. So I, I'm, a, I'm familiar with the culture. I'm good friends with Jimmy Sweeney. I'm familiar with what the culture. All these people want to make threats and talk. Yo, I'm in your country. Just come meet up. Let's fight. Nobody wants to fight. Oh, I'll get you on the show. Reese Murray is calling me at 85 kilograms. Reese, you know I'm not 85 kilograms. I can't get to 85 kilograms right now. But if you want, get in your mom's fucking car, minivan, drive down with your people, and we can have a straightener. No weapons. All in. Anything goes. But no weapons. I'll give you that. You know, it's just silly shit. But to speak about the sport and the fighting aspect of it, that that's between the fans. They're going to always cry about something. They were crying when I fucking shut down Maddie when I got my world title fucking shot set up. You were there for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk BKB Lockdown 2 then. So obviously you had uh, a few opinions coming in. First of all, Nathan Leeson versus Scott McHugh and Ryan Barrett versus Anthony Holmes. You had both of those going the opposite way that they actually did. Let's... Mm -hmm. uh, Let's break those down from your perspective. Okay. My perspective was Nathan Leeson is literally too slick to hit. I fought Nathan. Nathan I couldn't really hit him. And when I hit him, I knocked him down. I hit a lot harder than Scott McHugh, especially when I was light. I always hit harder. Scott's a good fighter. Me and Scott don't like each other right now, but he's a good fighter. He's not a bad fighter. He'll fight. I thought Nathan's boxing would carry him through. Mm -hmm. um, it did and it didn't. Depends on which way you see the last round. I personally had Nathan winning it. But Scott made a good show for himself and was stayed in there. I think the weight cut hurt Nathan. Um, you know, Nathan does the same thing I do. He gets way too high in weight, you know. Um, so I think that was a good fight. It, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was well. Scott brawled the way he should, and Nathan was boxing the way he should. How do you beat a boxer? By making it into a fight and vice versa, all that. But, you know, I think it was very close, and they should have a rematch. And I also think Reese 
who's another good fighter. He's not bad, but he's just a boxer. Like boxing isn't fighting. If we fight in the street, that's we're not going to box. Um, I think I think Reese should fight Nathan because Reese is trying to be Nathan. Nathan too slick Leeson was undefeated in BKB. The motherfucker's been in it longer than me, up until he fought Scott. And now you got the librarian Reese, who's real nice in person, stealing his nickname. Make them fight. Um, Ryan Barrett versus Anthony Holmes. So I train with Ryan. Ryan's a serious boxer. I think Anthony Holmes can fight. I, I, I've, I've never said he can't. If I do, I'm just breaking someone's balls. Of course he can fight. Do I think he's better than me? No. I thought Ryan would box. In that fight, Anthony was actually being the one utilizing more footwork, distance, and boxing. Ryan was getting punch crazy, trying to drill him with that one punch that he broke Matty Hodgson's head off with. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that was Ryan's undoing. I think if Ryan had to calm down, in boxed and set traps, he would have landed the big punch. Anthony Holmes knocked him down, I think, in the third. So it shows Anthony has no real power. He knocked the guy down. The guy got up, finished the fight, and it shows how good um, Ryan's chin is. And I'm not saying Anthony has no power as an insult. I'm just saying, basically, everyone I've hit in BKB clean falls down on the floor and starts convulsing, more or less. He doesn't. You know, people finish fights with him. I think boxing would have been the one to go for that. I, I was a little surprised at Ryan, how he was so heavy into that one punch mentality. Mm. Um, but I think it was a good fight. Again, aside from anything, I think that was a good fight. I think the Connor Tierney versus James Kennelly fight was a great bare knuckle boxing fight. You mm. know, um, me and James used to be really close and really tight. I used to train at his gym all the time. As far as I'm concerned, me and James are still cool. He's never said anything to me. Um, his brother trains me. So I train, with Michael and I train a fitness factory with uh, Simon, but until someone comes with me, you know, I saw him training up there with golden team, but it's hard for me to sit there and, and rip people who don't rip me. I don't think that James or Connor went into that fight with the intention to box. I think they both wanted to kill each other and they both are highly skilled boxers, tough fighters. And it was a great fight. What other cards on there? What's this guy, Dorian Darch, the Lord of the Rings creature. Oh, yes. Dorian Dodge defeated uh, Mason Shaw. Second round TKO, obviously. you. I think you described him as something out of Lord of the Rings. So, uh, that's what it looks yeah, like, and that's that. not an insult. He looks and punches like some creature from Lord of the Rings, don't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, size had a lot to play in that. Um, in his professional career, I think he only had the one finish. So it was quite surprising to see him dish out that sort of punishment. I'd, I'd like to see how he competes against a natural heavyweight, but... Super yeah. impressive performance, super impressive. I thought he was great, but I thought Mason, listen, me and Mason are set to fight, so I don't want to sit here and be too friendly. Yeah. Uh, Mason made fun of me for losing to Charlie Milner. So mm-hmm. I think it's great that he got to lose at a higher weight against the fighter. But Mason Shaw looked great in the fight. Mason can yeah. fight. Yeah. And, and Mason hit him with things that Darch just kind of didn't look like he cared. And Mason can punch. So for Mason to hit him like that, and not do anything. That says a lot for that guy. But I thought Mason looked good. Mason's eye socket, I called it. It looked like he got broke in the first uh, first exchange. And he got up and, and kept fighting until the doctor stopped it. It was a great fight. Um, that Lawson fight was real good, too. I, I like Johnny Lawson. I like the way he fights. I like the way he stays in there. The card was great. It was wonderful. Um, you know, I, I could do with all without all the respect. I, you know, it, 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 I don't I don't understand why that's cool. Oh, at the end of the day, everyone's friends. And I don't get it. But the fights were good. Um, the Charlie Milner versus Podmore fight. Um, I trained with Podmore. I'm friends with Milner. I personally thought Milner was going to be too big for Podmore. But I was wrong, and Podmore implemented a great game plan. It was a really good card. Um, if I hadn't been out of the country, because my, 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 I had to leave for immigration, because my six months was up like two weeks, three weeks prior, I'd have probably been on it beating up Anthony Holmes. But uh, no, I, I thought it was a good card. Uh, the Chapman fight, I really want to see Chapman fight more. I'm friends with Dan, me and him get along. That mm-hmm. motherfucker is like something out of a comic book. The Sweeney fight, I missed because I was out here and I didn't get to see it. But everyone knows what Sweeney does to everybody. He dismantles them, so he crushed that guy. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a, a short notice fight. I think Russell had... Buried his father the day before, come in on Monday, um, short notice. It was a, a big ask, as I say. You're not beating Jimmy Sweeney if you have a full camp, let alone no camp. So, yeah. Well, the thing it's about Jimmy- that, like, all the fake fans that want to do the fake this, the fake that, 
you know, speaking from a fighter's perspective, you know, the guy buried his dad and he's up there fighting bare knuckle versus yeah. Jimmy Sweeney. Something should be said about that. Like that takes a lot of balls. That's cool. And I don't know that Russell guy. Yeah. I don't I'm not trying to kiss his ass or be nice or be respectful. I'm just viewing it like that. Um, no, I thought it was a good fight. I thought even the first one between Cunningham and that other guy, you know, Cunning people. Public. it was like a brawl. Like, I like that. It was, it was good. It was violent. It was a very good card. I think, obviously, I would have made it better. Um, mm. But we'll see what the future holds with who I get. Like, I'm looking to ultimately go down if everything works out perfectly and I can stay away from fucking eating things I shouldn't fucking eat and too much fucking juice. Yeah, stay away from the sassafras and the root marm down here. <laughs> And the sweet tea. Um, I, I would like to get back down to 85 kilograms and fight between there and 93, the biggest. Mm. I mean, we'll see what's up. Uh, right now, everybody's just fucking acting like they're on EastEnders. I get all, all these messages. I just want to say one more thing. Mm. If I make a bet with you and I don't like you or I don't know you, I'm not paying you. I'm cutthroat. If I know you and I like you, I'll pay you. I was actually going to pay Reese the day that I messaged Reese yesterday. Yo, give me your bank details. I know you, me and you is cool. I'm going to hit you off with the money in the future in a day or two. The motherfucker, I go online and he's talking shit about me. So I don't unsend that message. Yo, what are you talking about? And then from there, you know, now the librarian's all angry. Picture that. A 68 kilogram, 22 year old kid is threatening to beat me up. Yo, you know what I would do to one of these people if I threw a body kick at him in the street? These are boxers. Listen, if you're a boxer, stay in boxing. Because the moment you go into the street where you can kick, slam, headbutt, elbow, knee, you're dead. Any BKB fighter, any BKB fighter that fights me and with, with, with kicks and all that is losing. I'll probably lose to quite a few of them with just the hands and boxing. But that's boxing. That ain't a fight. So I get all these messages. Oh, we've all smashed you up, blah, blah, blah. Reese, you could have had 100 pounds. You could have went and bought your fucking self some, some heroin or whatever you do up there in, in Castleford. You could have had a nice night with the lads getting all fucking stone and huffing paint or whatever you do. <laughs> fucking Castleford. It's like the fucking aboriginals of, of fucking England. <laughs> Terrible. So in, in closing, uh, sponsors and thanks. I'm not sure where you're Spons at sponsors wise at the moment, but who have you I'm got? Sponsors. I'm sick of these motherfuckers. I don't have, listen, Eric Olsen funded his own fight career by being a drug runner and selling shit. Back in the day, I would load my car up with fucking 100 pounds of weed, A to B, and i get a cut. I don't have sponsors. I had a few people, a few people that'll give me some money, like 250, 500 pounds, but that's few and far between. Like, right now, I just, I'm just i just down here training. Any sponsors I get in the future, thank you. And any I don't get, go fuck yourself. Everyone's, you know, I, I have a thing with that. When I see a lot of these BKB fighters sitting there, it's almost like begging. Like, I was in prison and I didn't have any money until my money hit my books. I didn't beg anybody for extra soups. I sucked it up. I lost weight, did a bunch of push-ups. And when my money hit the books, I went to the store and bought everything. Like, everyone's like, oh, oh, I need money so I can train and travel. Go sell some drugs. Go break into a house. Rob that motherfucker. Go rob a drug dealer. Go take that motherfucker's watch. He's driving a fucking expensive BMW. Stop begging people. That's how I feel about English motherfuckers over there. Every five seconds, blah, 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 blah. Give me money. Give me 200 pounds. Give me 200 pounds. My mental health, mental health. Uh, fight for charity, mental. Shut the fuck up, you fucking pussy. Anyone don't like it, step to me. Get your face fucking ripped in the street. Or come to the gym and I'll fucking put you on your neck. Or get on the promotion. I'll bust your shit in front of everybody straight down the middle. Like I did Maddie Hodgson, Maddie, 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 how's your motherfucking face? Every time you see and feel that scar, look, I got a scar. This is from like five scars from a few different fights. And this big one, that's from Ricky Nelder. And I like Ricky. Ricky's my boy, but guess what? Every time I see it, I remember that fight. I remember Ricky. So yo, check this out, Matt. Every time you see your big, stupid, ugly, Northern fucking head in the mirror, you're going to remember me. When your kid goes, oi, daddy, who put that skull on your face? Oi, son, it was that vile yank, the American, Eric. <laughs> I did that to you. You're going to remember me forever. Forever. And I'm going to do the same to the next motherfucker, especially Holmes. Holmes, if you grow balls and end up fighting me, simple. Oh, and I want to clear one thing up. 
I messaged Anthony Holmes after he insulted me, and I told him I was going to get a Ouija board and summon his dad up and break his dad's jaw. Somebody took what I said wrong. They claimed I said I was going to get a Ouija board and raise his father's spirit and eat it. I didn't say I was going to eat him. I said I was going to break his jaw. Just wanted to clear that up. And I like I said it. I stand by what I said. If you don't like it, come make me fucking pay for it. And ain't nobody getting their money on them bets either. Make me, motherfucker. And tune in to Valor Fighting Challenge in Tennessee. Because I might be fighting T. Cummings or Lee Cummings, the BKFC fighter. So it's going to be BKFC versus BKB trademark in fucking uh, 205, 93 kilograms to 100 kilogram MMA. And, you know, that's that. Brilliant. Well, Eric, it's been a, a nice long one. We've got a we've got a lot covered there, and uh, a pleasure as oh, always. Thanks. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll speak to you soon. Yep, appreciate it, man. See you later, George. Thank you. Have a good day. See. You.